Good morning, folks. Tuesday, May 31st. Welcome to Chip Break 12. Uh, we are finally starting to get organized. That was honestly my goal for the month of May, and I am behind on it, mostly because we've had so many job shop stuff going on. But I want this to be uh, an electronics bench, and this is supposed to go into my office, and this is supposed to be a video room. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, we're actually clearing some job shop stuff off our plate, which is awesome. Uh, one of the ones I've got to start today is we're going to make a couple of the these pretty good sized chunks of aluminum into some, I think they're sand casting templates, which should be pretty fun. We'll do a video on that. I have not forgotten about the Porsche fuel cap. Uh, we made this one because I wanted to have one for the open house, but if you take a look, I wasn't happy with the 3D tool paths. I think I figured out a better operation in Fusion, so I just need to get time on the lathe and get one of these banged out and, and wrap that project up. So sorry that um, that bothers me that I've drugged that out so far. I must have left our gimbal on over the weekend because it was dead, so I'm holding the camera by hand, which is which is no big deal. Um, a couple things. Tomorrow morning, which is Wednesday, we're doing our monthly Patreon live chat. So we alternate between, uh, I think it's seven, Hold on, I want to misspeak here. 7 a.m. on this card that's here today. 7 a.m., yep. 7 a.m. on one month and then 9 p.m. the next month. So all those are Eastern times. That way folks across the pond or on the West Coast can hopefully get one of those two that works. So tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. And what we do is just a, it's a sort of 30, 40 minute open session for anyone that supports our channel on Patreon, as little as one buck a month. And we talk about what's going on in the shop, about jobs. We're pretty open about just about anything Fusion 360 help. So if you're interested, we certainly appreciate the folks that support us on Patreon. And tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we'll do our live chat. Um, also, uh, I, think, I think a lot of folks know that we are doing CNC training here, and we actually have our new dedicated classroom for it. We've done, I don't know, six or seven classes since last year, and Every one has been sold out except one. And for, I have no idea why, we have a class this weekend with only one person enrolled. So if anyone is interested, we're offering a discount on it. Um, it's here in Zanesville, Ohio. Um, it's a two day class, Saturday and Sunday. It's Fusion 360, CAD, CAM, a lot of time on the machine. Um, if it's, you know, if it's only one guy, we're gonna have a great time banging through a lot of stuff. Uh, it'd be nice to have one or two more. I think the class actually works better when you get some other perspectives and so forth. So info in the video description. Uh, I had a really good talk with John Grimsmo and he, he really shared some really good and interesting stuff in his Grimsmo Grind 009. And one of the things that he talked about was the amount of monthly responsibility they've got financially and what they've got to do to make that, meet those obligations. And he talked about it um, and it, in my opinion, he didn't have as much confidence as he deserves to have in what they're doing. What they're doing is awesome. Um, and we're in a similar way. We were very different businesses, but uh, I, we, I talked to John about it later and we sort of agreed there was a, um, you know, he moved into a shop and he bought that Mori. We moved into a big shop and we've got more overhead now. And John and I both have, I think, a healthy amount of fear. A, we're, it's not that we're scared, but we're respectful of the obligations and the fact that we're working our butts off to grow something. But neither one of us, and, and it's just my opinion, did anything even close to irresponsible. And that's what's awesome to me. You know, for John buying a Mori three years ago, that's irresponsible. And, and for us, you know, we built this book of business where the shop that we're in is something we're comfortable, very comfortable with. And so that's what's so cool is it's okay to say, holy cow, we've got a lot of work ahead. I've got a lot that I want to accomplish and, and from growing this business and machining and products. But um, it's pretty cool that you can, in this day and age, go from a garage company to building something um, that lets you make these bigger decisions. It doesn't mean they're not scary, but they're not irresponsible. Um, on that note, I had some, this, I love these chip breaks because I can kind of make notes and I don't have to sit on them for like a month when I do some sort of a shop update. Um, I, I've always liked feeling, um, this kind of sound weird, poor. So the way my wife and I have always run a lot of our finances is we've always set up automatic savings. So every month we just have money pulled away. Uh, we always used to do it with 
um, what was formerly ING Direct, now I think it's Capital One 360, but it's one of those online banks where you just say, every month I want you to take X amount automatically out of our account, our, our normal account that we put our paychecks into. And I like doing that because it sets up your savings and it takes time because, and that's I think the reason some people don't like to save money is they think, well, if I'm only saving X hundred bucks a month or whatever, that's not that much money. But you do it for 10 years, good things happen. And um, I like, I just feel like even, I think I'm a pretty financially responsible person. I know I am, but even I, sometimes it's easier to make that decision. Do I need to do this? Do I need to buy this tool or thing when you don't see too much money in your bank account? So I like that sort of fact that automatic savings keeps you saving money and it kind of tucks it away to somewhere where you can kind of forget about it. Um, the last thing I want to talk about today um, was one of these topics that I, uh, actually two more things, one of these topics that I've always wanted to get into with you guys, which is what is our business? And I know we kind of present ourselves as a job shop, and that is true. We are a job shop. We will take on, in quote, jobs and run one-offs, two-offs, 10-offs, 50-offs. But my goal was never to be a job shop. My goal was to use CNC machines and technology to make products, to be an entrepreneur. It's kind of my always thing. I've actually run a number of companies now creating products and, and being entrepreneurial like that. The job shop stuff started because it was a way to push my skill sets to teach myself new things, you know, push myself outside of my comfort zone. And I just kind of thought, well, if I can, if I can do it this way, that's going to help me become a machinist. And it's, it's not, it's fun that it pays money. Um, so it's kind of weird because even today, you know, if, if we do, we do, we do four things. We do our YouTube channel, we do job shop, we make our own products and we do our training classes. And if I had to give up one of those, it would definitely be uh, the job shop it's it's by far in my opinion it's not that it's the hardest to make money in it's it's the hardest to scale um you know when we quote a job it's there's a lot of work before during and after that job that is it's a lot of work it's very difficult to grow to grow our job shop two or three fold i think i could five or ten fold not only could i not but when you start getting into bigger work and volume you've got to have more um equipment you start dealing with more difficult customers we can be kind of choosy which i i like um so i guess what i wanted to mention was for you guys out there that are in your garage that are thinking about this that you love machining because at the end of the day that's what i did i loved machining when i got paid for it that was pretty cool you know for us the job shop has been and remains basically a way to earn money learn and, and kind of put off the future in, in a good way in other words to this day, you know, the job shop has been a great way for Jared to come up to speed in, you know, not that much time, less than a year, and really become a competent machinist, take on projects in fusion, quote, bid stuff out, um, get work done. And the same for me. Um, so the idea was that the job shop, again, is a way to build a part of a business that gets us a somewhat stable revenue stream. Um, it's... I hate to use the word stable and job shop in the same sentence because they're not, it's, it's not a stable revenue stream in that sense, but it let us go to that next level. So um, what I would not do, for example, is um, quit a day job to take a chance buying a bunch of equipment to launch a new product. I like that idea that you, you get some skill sets, cash coming in the door, the ability to produce cash with your equipment, and then you can start mixing in uh, fun stuff, projects, products, more risky things uh, later down the road. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, and I don't know why I want to mention it, but I just thought I'd share with you guys on Friday, I had a slightly more hectic than normal morning, and I thought maybe you guys would enjoy. I made these notes. This is everything that I did before uh, 11 a.m., so that would be probably starting at about 7 a.m. I shipped eight web orders, which I'm still packaging up and shipping them, which I probably shouldn't, but I am. I shipped two job shop orders. Uh, I answered about 20 real emails. So like legitimate emails, not just yes, no, quick, you know, deletes. Um, I helped Jared set up one of the Tormach machines on a job. I wrote a one page insurance narrative memo on what our business does that goes into the file for our insurance company. Uh, I quoted two job shop jobs. 
Uh, I was working with Jared and a material supplier on a new product that we're coming out with. So trying to figure out the, the recipe for the product and material and so forth. Uh, I had a voicemail from a prospective accountant. Uh, there's a legal issue going on with YouTube. Folks are embedding videos and it looks like they're shutting off ads, which kind of bothers me I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, I got a call from my wife. We did a Facebook post. We shared the Fusion Friday. We recorded the chip break. Um, well, yeah, and that was it. So that's kind of <laughs> what my morning looks like. Thought you guys might enjoy. Uh, take care. See you tomorrow.